It's nice to see some hands. Your hands look great this morning. Have you been using hand sanitizer? I hope so. Uh, well, as we begin to worship this morning, I wanted to uh, to bring to you a song that it, it's not a new song, but it might be new to some of you. Um, but this morning, uh, it's called Great Things. And uh, I really felt like in this time, uh, still in this time of uncertainty, we just want to proclaim God's greatness this morning. So as we do that, uh, would you sing along with us? The words are in the bulletin. It's a pretty easy song to learn. So let's begin. Put your hands together. Come let us worship. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Oh, see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. Oh, He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, he has done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great. faithful through every storm you'll be faithful forevermore oh you have done great things oh for i know you will do it again for his promise is yes and amen you have done great things oh my god oh god you do great Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Would you sing that again, church? Hallelujah, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, you have done great things have done great things oh hero of heaven you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awaken the light oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done great things oh god you do great I shared this in the first service and I said 
So many of us, I know myself included, are so sometimes fearful about the outcomes and everything that's going on around us. And sometimes it's easy to lose faith and to see what goodness can come out of this and what's God, what God's plan is in all of it. And I think for us, I think our reminder is to keep our eyes focused on God and to keep our eyes focused on the prize that's ahead. And so if you're here this morning and you have any anxiety and you have any fear, if you feel any type of way, I just want to encourage you as we sing this song to bring that to the altar this morning. Lay it at the feet of the Father and ask God to take your fear and turn it into hope. Ask Him to take your doubt and place trust because at the end of the day, God is with us every step of the way. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of the sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself?
And Father, tonight, <laughs> this morning, we place our hope and we place our trust in you. Give us the strength to carry on when we are weak. Give us the faith to hold on when we are doubting. I pray that you would be with us in every aspect of our lives. Watch over us and be with us. In Jesus' name I pray and everybody said, Amen. Well, good morning, guys. Can we get up for the worship team real quick? These guys are awesome. Doing a great job. We love these, so thankful for them. My name is Andrew Hernandez. Uh, I just got some quick things that I would love to share with you guys and welcome you here this morning. Real quick, first and foremost, got to get a shout out to the dock. We have our youth section over there hanging out. There's masks, there's hand sanitizer. So if you're a student, go hang out up there. It's a great view. It's in the shade. It feels great up there. Go check that out. Also, if you're a junior high or high school student, uh, we've been meeting at Ukaipa Regional Park uh, recently during whatever we're calling this craziness that's going on in the world. Uh, but we're not going to meet there anymore. Starting this Wednesday, we're going to meet right here at the ranch at 630. We'd love to see you there. It's going to be a great time. Um, the team would just love to have you. Also, young adults, uh, we've been meeting Sundays at 7 p.m. right here at the ranch, right over by the docks. It's been really awesome. It's been a great time. I want to personally invite you there tonight. I actually get to teach. I'm really looking forward to it, so I'd love to see you there. And if you're not a young adult, uh, find a young adult and invite them, okay? There's, there's no excuse young adults shouldn't be there. It's really awesome. It's beautiful weather in the evening. It's just a really uh, fun time. Lastly, I just want to say thank you to you guys for your generosity and your giving. Um, it's because of your, your answering what God has put in your heart to give that we're able to meet here um, at the ranch. So we're able to have this sound system set up and these tents and these volunteers. It's just been awesome. So I just want to thank you for, for doing that, you guys. If you want to give, um, I know the world's crazy right now and times are tough for just about everybody. Um, but if you're feeling called to give, we have several ways you can give. We have a little offering box on your way out that you can give. You can still give online and text to give is still working. And it's great. Um, or you can even mail in a check uh, to the church offices. But again, I just want to thank you for that because um, it really is awesome and such a unique thing to be out here doing drive-in church. And that's because of your generosity. So we thank you. Um, but without further ado, will you please join me in welcoming up the amazing Pastor Danny Thompson. Hi, Sandra. Good morning. So this is, this is my first time speaking in a few months to a live crowd. Even though we're in cars, it's still live, right? Been doing a lot of Zoom stuff, but it's great like seeing faces in cars and seeing like li lights flash every once in a while. I'm like, yes, they're with me. So um, I want to share a story with you. It's out of uh, it's, it's not out of a book. We're going to get to Exodus. If you want to get to Exodus chapter 16, that's where we'll be in a second. But one of my heroes of the faith, his name is Philip Foxwell. He was born in 1914. And in the Great Depression, he was a magician that was also um, a, a Christian. And so he went by the name of the missionary magician, Philip Foxwell. And so he did 500 shows over the course of two years in the early 30s during the Great Depression. He was about, for our, our doc crew, he was about 17 years old when he started. And so he did all these shows around the country. Literally, he would hitchhike, not in cars, but on planes. He would show up at an airport like, hey, um, can I get a ride? And they would give him a ride. Like, what a crazy different world. And so I found out about his story by reading his book and found out he was still alive. I called him when he was 92 years old. He said, Danny, I'm doing two shows today. I was like, who is this guy? He's like, I just created a brand new piece, and I'm going to do it today. I'm going to send it to you. What's your address? And so he sent me this brand new piece that he designed. In his 90s, he's still doing stuff, right? And so 95 years old, he lived to be 99 years old. But I was like, I have to meet this guy. He's not going to be with us forever, right? I mean, eternity. But so I drive down to L.A. to meet with him. And I get there, I start to talk to him, and this other guy comes in, and he's like, looks at me, who are you? I was like, well, you know, I'm Danny, I read Philip's book, you know. He's all, oh, so you're a fan. I'm like, well, okay, I guess so. He's like, listen, Philip and I have prayed every day for 50 years. Do you want to join us? 
I was like, yes, right? I mean, like, what kind of, like, question is that? I'm like, for sure. So these guys put their hands on me, and they prayed for me, and they prayed for their lives, and that God would continue to use them. My mind, like, exploded. Here are these guys that are in their 90s, and they're still depending on God every single day. I want to look in Exodus at how God wants to provide for us in miraculous ways, but we have to learn to depend on him every single day. So Exodus chapter 16, verse 2, it starts by saying, starts by saying this. It says, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died in the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Think about this. Just one month before, God opened up the Red Sea. The, they went through, the Israelites went through, the Egyptian army was swallowed up. And one month later, they're like, hey, we're, we're starving. We're hungry. Like, it, it's so quickly that we could just jump to old methods, old thoughts, old habits. And these guys, they began to rewrite history. Like things were so great there where they got beat, right? Where they had to um, work hard hours and they were forced to do labor beyond their means. And it, it just doesn't even make sense, but that's how quickly we forget. So verses four and five, verses four and five. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough food for that day. In this way, I will test them to see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and, um, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So, Basically, God's saying, look, I'm going to provide for you every single day. Even on the day of rest, just hold off, gather a little bit more, and I'll take care of you then, right? But here's what happens, is God wants to see, are they going to be obedient? And my question for you is, in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of the season you're in, whether it's good or bad or difficult or whatever the situation is, will you be obedient? That's the question. It's not you know, well, God, I'll be obedient if. God, I'll do this if. God, no, no, we don't get a bargain with God. We don't get to make a deal with God. We get to make a choice. Are we going to choose to follow him? Are we going to choose to be obedient to him no matter where you are today? So the Israelites, they were like, hey, look, we're starving. We're hungry. And so God hears our prayers. So watch verses 6 and 7. It says, so Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, in the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord. So two things here is one is even though the Israelites are complaining, God hears them. Wherever you're at today, God hears you. God knows your story. He hasn't given up on you. He hears your cry. He hears your heart. He hears your struggle. Are you going to depend on him? Are you going to allow him to walk you through this because he knows the outcome? So not only does he hear you, he tells, this is Moses telling him, look, in the morning you are going to see the glory of the Lord. And they're just like, okay, I can't wait. So watch what happens, though. First of all, before we get to this, does anybody, maybe by flashing your lights, does anybody know what the word manna in Hebrew means? Anybody? I'm going to look for some lights. It's pretty simple, but I uh, saw one person earlier today, but uh, I don't see anybody. So it just means, what is this? So, so manna, um, you know, the manna from heaven, you know, we've heard about it, but it just means, what is this? So remember... Moses tells them, you will see God's glory in the morning. So verses, skip down to verses 13 through 15. So it says, that evening quail came in and covered the camp. So there's meat to eat, right? But in the morning, they're all excited. Hey, we're going to see God's glory. We're going to see it. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, 
thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is this? What is it? Right? For they did not know what it is. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. So check this out. Check this out. This is how I picture this going down. Is I picture all of the angels are like just waiting for this glorious moment when God is going to create cereal, right? It's like literally God's about to create cereal, like frost flakes. The bread was like frosted flakes, right? So God has like cereal. These aren't frosted flakes, but he's like, look, I'm going to create cereal. And the Israelites are like, hey, what, what, what's this? Right? And God's like, no, 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 you don't understand. And the angels are like, what? They don't get it? How do they not know this is cereal? This is epic. This is a great moment in time. They wanted God to provide in a different way. God's like, I'm going to provide in a miraculous way. You're going to see my glory in something as small as bread. But they were like, no, we want something bigger. We want to see God's glory in some other miraculous way. And God's like, no, this is the way I want to show you my glory is in the ordinary things of life like bread. And they wanted more. It wasn't enough. It was like, oh, what's this? And the angels were like around going like, do not reveal coffee right now. Do not reveal coffee, right? They're, they're just like, you can't do it. You know, cereal wasn't enough for them. They're like, what's this? They can't handle it. But let me give you a picture of how much like um, bread, manna that God revealed. He said, look, I want you to go out and each person is to take three pounds. This is one pound. Okay, so it'd be like taking three boxes for each person for breakfast. Like that's a Hebrew portion. That's ridiculous, right? That's God though. He's like, look, I want to give to you. And it says that, you know, those who gathered even more had plenty. And those who gathered just a little bit had plenty. God can provide plenty for you in the season that you're in. No matter where you're at, God has a great plan for you. And part of his plan is by you depending completely on him to provide in miraculous and ordinary ways for you. So let's skip down to verse 33. I want you to think about this moment. Here they are. They're eating bread and they're going to eat this manna, this bread for 40 years. But in the beginning, this is what happens. Verse 33, it says, So Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar and put an omer of manna in it. So three of those, three pounds of it, right? And then place it before the Lord to be kept for generations to come. So in other words, he's saying, Look, I want you to remember how I've provided for you in miraculous ways. With this bread, I want you to remember. And so I want to give you a challenge in the middle of this virus going around. And I know there's different beliefs on what's going on, but what we do know is that God is in control, that he's sovereign, and that in this same way where they're wandering around the desert for 40 years, they had this jar that they would look at and they would remember. And then the next generation would come and they would see this jar and they would remember what God has done. And so I just want to challenge you, maybe as a family, maybe just on your own, to get a jar Get a jar and put things that you think don't even matter right now. Like maybe your first mask, right? That you piece together from like a sock and pantyhose and who knows what else. Stuff it in the jar. Maybe you're still wearing that. Don't stuff it in there then. Um, maybe some hand sanitizer. Put that in there. Maybe a story or a letter of what God has done right now in this moment. Put that in there. Maybe a, a song that's important to you during this season. Write that song down. Put it in there. What's God doing? What's his story right now? Even though it might not all make sense, put it in there. And as you gain clarity in the days to come, as you see God's vision for what he's doing right now, later on you'll be able to look back and go, wow, I, I had no idea what you were doing here, God, but you were preparing me for this. God, I was struggling to be obedient here, but I'm so thankful I was obedient here because now I see what you're doing here. And it couldn't have happened any other way without this. So create a memory that points you to who God is in your life. Because there will be a day when you get to the other side. For the Israelites, it was a promised land, right? They would hear about, there's a promised land full of milk and honey. Turn to Joshua. 
in Joshua 5, 12, it says this. It says, the manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but the year they ate, um, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. So God provided for them, provided for them, provided for them in a miraculous way through this bread, through this manna. And then they get to the promised land, and he's like, I want you to go sow seed. And I want you to go plant. And I want you to go take care of, uh, of the vineyard. I want you to go take care of the field. I want you to go take care of the cattle. And when they did all these things, they ate the produce. They ate the uh, they, they worked the land, and they were able, able to eat off that. So it's another way, another miracle of how God provides for us. He could provide in miraculous ways where he just shows up and gives us something, or he could say, go and work the land. But what happens, so th that was God's new plan, like, go, go work this. I'm no longer going to provide for you like that. But what happens when you look at your work, everything you've done, and God stops providing for whatever reason. He's blessed your work for a season, but now you're out of work, right? That's the story of my wife and I. Like for 17 years, I've done 4,000 events all around the country. We've, been, we've had opportunities to do crazy amounts of stuff. The last five months, it's been all Zoom stuff. I'll do my first event this week in Ohio and then Michigan. But it's, it's a crazy season for us, right? Maybe... You're in a similar situation where you're like, I'm out of work. What do we do when we can't eat, when we can't provide? I want to look at, at um, Ecclesiastes. When there's a drought, when things slow down, what do we do? So turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. In chapter 11, it gives us a glimpse of how we're to work the land, of, on how we're to, to live in every season. So it says this in verse 1 says, ship your grain across the sea. So you've worked the land, you have your grain, you have your supply, right? And after many days, you may receive re a return. So in other words, you may, you may not, right? You're going to send out your ship and hopefully it comes back where there's a return and you can provide for your family. But sometimes that ship comes back and it still has all the grain and you still can't provide for your family. So this is what he says, verse 2. It says, invest in seven um, ventures, yes, and eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So he says, look, invest in seven things. No, in eight things. So in other words, you need to work and then maybe have a side hustle and then do something over here. You're just working the land. You're doing whatever you can. And then you don't know what the future holds. So this, again, is where you depend on God. You trust in him to get you through this season, right? And then you just go, okay, disaster came upon the land. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, it gives us a, a clue. Verse 3, it says, if clouds are full of water, they pour forth rain. So in other words, well, there's a drought now, but I need to wait for the clouds, and when they're ready, they're going to drop forth rain. So I need to be prepared now. I can't go plant seed after the rain falls. That's not going to work. We need to be prepared. So maybe God right now, right now in this season, is preparing you for something in tomorrow's season. But you have to depend on him now. You have to trust him now. The key is we have to start. So look, verse, um, verse 3 says, or verse 4, it says, Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. Right? So if you're constantly trying to figure out, oh, when's the perfect time? When's the perfect time? You're never going to do anything because the wind's never going to be right. The situation's not going to be right. You have to start. What's God put on your heart? What's some way of starting that either now or getting prepared to start it soon? Verse 5 says, as you do not know. Again, you don't know. Over and over again in these verses, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. God knows. He knows your story. He knows what's next. So we trust in him, right? You don't know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in the mother's womb. So you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. So the principle here is, look, you are going to focus on something. You could focus on your circumstances. You could focus on the wind. And you could be like, oh, my goodness, these things are so huge. 
Or you could focus on God, the maker of all things, who is infinitely bigger than any problem, any situation, any circumstance you find yourself in today. So we trust God to get us through. We focus on him. We put our hope in him. Verse 6, sow your seed in the morning, and at evening do not let your hands be idle, for you do not know which will succeed. Right? You've, you've planned this thing, you plan this thing, you plan this thing. You don't know what's going to succeed, whether it will be this or that, or whether both will do equally well. God might bless both things, seven things, all eight things. Our job isn't to try to figure that out. It's to do the work that he's called us to do day and night serving our neighbors, loving those who are the least of these, right? Looking for opportunities to serve, love, give with what we have where we're at. Turn to Habakkuk, and you're going to see one of my favorite prayers, if not my favorite prayer in all the scriptures in Habakkuk chapter 3. I'm not going to go through um, the prayer. That's something you could do on your own. Uh, Maybe as a family, pray about Habakkuk chapter 3. But I'm going to go to the very end of this verse. And I want to ask this question though. What happens though when you do all of those things but your ships still return empty? Everything you've done comes back empty. What do you do? What do you do? This is what you do. Habakkuk. And I'm going to list them as we go. So he plants fig trees. So verse 17. Chapter 3 verse 17. It says, Though the fig tree does not bud. So he's not going to get any fruit off the fig tree. So that's one. And there are no grapes on the vines. No grapes. That's two. Though the olive crop fails. That's three. The fields produce no food. That's four. The sheep. um, And there are no sheep in the pen. That's five. There are no cattle in the stalls. That's six. Over and over again, like I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried that, but my ships are returning empty. There is nothing. Verse 18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. That's our prayer. That's our cry. That's who we hope in. That's what we learn to do. No matter what happens, even when everything comes back empty, we rejoice in the Lord. We choose to be joyful in God our Savior. The sovereign Lord is our strength, and he could sustain us. He could get us through. His story is going to carry us through. We're going to be a part of eternity looking back at this small time in history going, God, your story is so much bigger. I, I can't believe what you did in this season because I learned to depend on you. I didn't just complain about everything. I learned to see you in the little things, in the small things, and trust you, knowing that your way is better than my way, that your thoughts are higher than my thoughts, and that you have a plan. Help me to live into that and to trust that today. Let's pray. God, I pray that we would trust you in every season of life. God, when everything fails, when our ships come back empty, when we have nothing, when we feel empty, God, help us to put our hope and our trust and our faith and our joy and our life in your hands. God, I know there are people that are are just feeling the emptiness of the season. Lord, I pray that they would know that you have a purpose and a plan, that you never give up on them, that you never forsake them. Lord, I know there's others that you are blessing immeasurably more than all they could ask or imagine. May they continue to trust in you and depend on you and put their hope in you. God, wherever we're at today, help us to find ourselves in you. In Jesus' name.
before you head out, I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. If you want to just position yourself to receive that blessing now, whether that's just bowing your head or being still, holding your hands out, whatever place is best for you to receive from the Lord. This is my prayer for you, that the Lord would bless you, that the Lord would keep you, the Lord would make his face shine on you, that he would be gracious to you, that he would do immeasurably more than all you could ask, all you could imagine, that he would take you and your family into a new season full of joy and love and hope and grace and peace, that the Lord would bring you comfort, that your Father would hold you. God, I pray that you would do great things in and through your people. We love you, Lord, and we lift up your holy name. Show us your glory. Provide for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Invite a friend next week. The parking lot guys will help you out. God bless you. See you next Sunday.